صباح الخير ايات والسيد Good afternoon to you ladies and gentlemen dear members of the public I'd like to extend a very warm welcome to you and thank you for being with us in spite of all of the difficulties. Before giving the floor to Madam Kira Kuglikova, Director of the Conference Management Division, for her to give us an official, uh, or make official remarks before the celebration, I'd like to make a couple of um, organizational comments. I would ask you please to mute your microphones. I would point out that this event will be recorded and uh, rebroadcast later on over United Nations social media in Arabic and in English. In addition, uh, soft background Asi. music will be played by our dear colleague Muhammad Asi throughout the course of this celebration and he is from the interpretation division several songs by Mr. Fahri will be presented at the end of this celebration may I now give the floor to Madam Kira Kruglikova to make a statement Thank you very much, uh, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, friends and colleagues. Um, it is my great pleasure to welcome you and to be with you today to celebrate together the Arabic Language Day and to admire the splendor and the beauty of the Arabic language. To promote multilingualism and cultural diversity, the United Nations dedicates a day every year to celebrate each of its six official languages and raise awareness of their history and cultural impact. December 18th is the date chosen to celebrate Arabic because it is the day on which the General Assembly decided in 1973 to designate Arabic the sixth official UN language. Arabic is a language that unites more than 400 million native speakers in the Arab world. It also constitutes a lingua franca for at least 1.8 billion Muslims around the world. It is also the liturgical language in many churches in the Arab world. Furthermore, Arabic is the language in which a significant part of the Jewish cultural and religious heritage was written. Arabic is also a language that is deeply entwined with Western heritage. It played a historic role in disseminating sciences and philosophies of ancient civilizations, such as the Greeks, the Romans, the Persians, and the Indians, all of whom contributed to the European Renaissance. Culturally speaking, modern Europe would not have been what it is today without the impact of medieval Arab civilization, which had preserved, translated, and expanded on text in various scientific and humanities disciplines. For example, it is largely thanks to the scholars of Baghdad's House of Wisdom, Bayat al hikma that much of Aristotle survived to be reintroduced in Europe and the West at large. Arabic is one of the most borrowed from languages in the world. According to the Merriam-Webster Dictionary, Arabic has given English speakers the words for two of their most beloved drinks, coffee and alcohol. In fact, Arabic vocabulary is markedly present in many languages, from Amharic to Croatian, from Malay to Persian to Tagalog, as well as French, Spanish, Portuguese, and other European and Asian languages. In an increasingly globalized and digitized world, Arabic continues to be a language that connects people through culture, science, literature, and many other fields. Our program today is an open invitation to connect through modern Arabic literature and art, as we have with us three Arab artists, Nasir Khamer, Omar Ponsat, and Fadil El Aswawi, whose works are very illustrative of the splendor and beauty of the Arabic language. I hope you will enjoy our program and wish you a very happy Arabic language day. Thank you. Shukran. Uh, thank, thank you very much, Mr. Sergulufa, for your valuable statement. Shukran jazilan. Thank you very much indeed for your remarks. We will now move on to our program. وقبل أن نعطيه الكلمة لكي يقدم عرضه 
We will have Mr. Khamir with us, but before giving him the floor, I'd like to introduce him briefly. Mr. Khamir was born in the city of Korbak, which uh, is in part of the Mediterranean. He received a UNESCO grant to study cinema in France during the new wave. He was immersed, therefore, in Western Parisian culture and in Parisian culture. He um, was able to marry the north, uh, east, south, south and west, and he became a contact point between the shores of the Mediterranean Sea, its cultures and creativity. He is an artist with a number of talents. He is a director and a calligraphist. He used uh, Arabic calligraphy and was inspired by this for uh, paintings that have been exhibited uh, with a great deal of admirers. He is a storyteller and a narrator. He has told a lot of stories uh, with, uh, of beauty through images. In his uh, paintings, we are taken to the world of dervishes, where we have circularity and culture and the beauty of movement. He was inspired by the city of Tunis in his stories. He is therefore the author of four works, including the, history, the stories from God's country in 1975 and produced a film uh, in which he used legends. In the 1980s, he made his first film, The Wanderers of the Desert. This is an extremely beautiful film. Uh, work where he strives to release himself from links of a forgotten lost past. In 2005, a third uh, film was uh, produced, Baba Aziz, Aziz which was uh, co-produced by a number of countries. He's taken up the spirit of El Hel Hazm in Andalusi through the film known as The Dove's Lost Necklace which was very successful. He also produced a film on Ben Arabi and Muhyiddin's search. These are works which call upon us to think about politics, religion, philosophy, Sufism also, by maintaining love and the greatness of values. Mr. Nasek Hamir responded to our invitation and we would like to thank him for this. He is with us with his wife and uh, we are very pleased to welcome them today. I would now like to give you the floor, and the floor also goes to your wife, who will talk about uh, your... Thank you very much indeed, uh, Director, for your invitation. Thank you, Mohamed. I will be with Nawara Omar Basha in order to read out the various definitions of love. I will try to talk to you about the soul of a language. You know that there are a lot of words in Inuit to describe snow. The snow in the evening, in the morning, wet snow, a slippery snow. Because snow is at the very heart of Inuit civilization. For the Arabs, there are 60 words to describe love. I think that love is at the very core and the soul of this culture. But just to start out from the beginning, in 1991, I made a film which is called The Dove's Lost Necklace. This, well, why did I choose this title, The Dove's Lost Necklace? Because there is an Andalus author who lived in Cordoba at the end of the 10th, the early 11th century, who was a major writer and one day received a letter and asked, 
him about uh, love and he responded with this book called The, Lo the Dove's Lost Necklace. And for my film, I, lo I added in the word lost. And why did I do this? Because I was asking about the society in the 10th century, talked about love, and in the 20th century about turning one's back on this wealth. The film talks about a calligraphist called Hassan. And Hassan had looked for the 60 words of love. I presented the film in Berlin. And when it came out, many young people, both boys and girls, who approached me and asked me, where can we find this book with these 60 words of love? And I don't think they wanted to learn Arabic, but they really wanted to discover the wealth in the soul of this language. And I promised that I would write this book. So I worked on it for about 30 years, and during lockdown, together with my wife, we wrote the book called Esh, which describes love and the language and definition that describes love. Now, why this word Esh? This is a word that we find in the Turkish, in the Persian languages. It's spoken amongst the Azeris, the Turkmen, in the Maghreb, everywhere, really. This is a world which, uh, this is a word which uh, crosses from China, the Uyghurs, down to Morocco, and indeed Mauritania, and even further down. This is a word which describes love in all of those languages. I should say that we don't only have the word love, even the Arabic alphabet, which I would call the uh, alphabet of the sands, there is a word in the alphabet, which is a letter of love, the wow. You'll see the painting here that uh, is with us today and is on the book. Wow is the only letter in the alphabet which is meaningful. In other words, it, there is no such equivalent in France. We say heaven and earth, men and women. And hence the definition of this letter. Love, because uh, love can be found during um, meetings with people. And this is the only letter I've found which uh, carries out this function, if you will. The book is divided into four chapters. We have the desert, because the Arabic language um, describes the desert, and also the Arabic language. The third language pertains to love. And in uh, traditional love stories, uh, and the last chapter, then, for is death. So I'll start out by giving you a number of definitions of the word love. To start out with, the Arabic language uh, came into existence in the desert. How can we explain this? The roots of the words in the Arab language always have a specific meaning. For example, act means reason or right. But behind this word, we had uh, the description of a, a camel, or we have the word sharia. Everybody uses this word. Sharia is something that we carry to a water point. And when we're moving towards water in the desert, we're moving uh, in a straight line. So this is where the word Sharia comes from, or Uriyem. This is a word which denotes love. And originally in the desert, it meant a, a camel disease which uh, a camel which loses its balance and, t and uh, comes off the road. And when this happens, it is condemned to death. I'm wondering whether this language, which is greatly nuanced 
in its expressions. It's perhaps as if it were about to replace the colors that are lacking in the desert. The first noun or the first uh, word of love is tele, and I will ask uh, it to be read out. C'est la perte de la vue. Tella is the lost of vision. Ce sont les lances dressées, montures terrifiantes, hommes couchés de front à même la terre. C'est le dérobé d'amour transi de peur. It is take love away with uh, fear and stupor. C'est le possédé de lui-même. It is possess possessing oneself what is prohibited, the loss of love between waves of sadness and sorrow, where one loses one's head and doesn't know what to do. There is another word, tabel aussi. Tabel means uh, spicing up food how love uh, spices up one's life. This is destiny's reversal, turning back its arms, crying for vengeance, or worse. This is the time of destruction which ruins cities. This is love like destiny, striking and bringing about loss of reason swallowing the being to the point of extinction. This is the imprisoned heart, submissive, irretrievable, plunging the lover into endless depression. This is suffering, the swirling of a fatal vertigo, spinning to the point of annihilation. I'm going to talk about the second chapter now, which is the language. And I should say that uh, Arab tribes in Arabia before Islam had meetings in the Mecca at the time, and the poets were the ones who strengthened the language. There was a poetry competition, and we know some of the poems. In other words, whenever a tribe won, and whenever a, a tribal poet won, uh, his poetry is classified as the best type of poetry. It is the classical language which associates tribes, and this is the language that is uh, described uh, describes current everyday uh, current day Arabic. But we also have a oral language that talks about uh, desire. And then the father's language, which is the written language. We always have these comings and goings between the mother's language and the father's language. I would even say that this civilization can be found between two uh, books. We have the Quran, which came from heaven and uh, dictates how one should live. And then we have the stories of people, people, how they would like to live. So we have the comings and goings between desire and the law. And we cannot be a man without having accepted this battle between desire and the law. Let me now give you a couple of words, tell you a couple of words about the language of love. For example, Khalaba. Khalaba. This is the wild beast's claw, or the viper's bite. It is also the pith of the palm tree. This is the membrane enveloping the heart, like lovers who hold each other close. This is seduction, deceit, flattery, and the blinded lover. 
This is bedazzlement by beauty, enthralling reason. A promise without hope. Abuse. Love's illusion. This is a thunderbolt. The cloud slashed by lightning, unable to bear rain. A deceptive love, which will not bear fruit. There's another word, Hanin, which is more well known, and which reflects this wealth of nuances in the language, vis-à-vis -vis the language of love. Hanin. This is the palm tree's trunk, the pillar holding up the tent. This is the night's dark veil, obscurity, the shadows, the shield, the tomb and the shroud, or the heart hidden in the chest. This is the inclination shared by two beings, who do not yet know that they are of the same blood. This is affection and living tenderness. This is the soul's size as it remembers the absent one. This is the wife who has lost her husband, refusing to remarry in order to protect her children. This is the persistent desire which leads you on with a poignant sadness to a feverish joy, the sob, the lament, and the affliction. This is the tender groaning of the female camel for her calf, the groaning of the string vibrating at the instant that the bow releases its arrow, the moaning of a violent wind or of the storm rumbling in the distance. It is also the moaning of Christ on his cross. Compassion. Just another word in the language, another word is tauk. Tauk, this is the curving branch, a vigorous stretching of the bowstring. This is the horse which has lost its shoes, afraid to move forward. It is also self-sacrifice. This is the full goatskin, or the filled being, overflowing with anger, with sadness or passion, eyes filled with tears. This is the violent impulse of sympathy towards someone or something. It is the call of the soul inflamed with its desires. So that we, this is the third chapter on love. We should say that classical Arabic poetry, it's, it always, the poem always starts with the traces that the loved one left with, the, as it were, a sign of absence and this ephemeral feeling that the wind is picking up because it wants to wipe out all trace. Man in the desert is between two places, between two water points. He's always in a state of desertification. He seeks, he goes from one point to the next. And you know the roots in the desert are marked with what's called a rajam. A rajam is a heap of pile of stones that highlights the, the way. So, and the, the, now the promise of water is the promise of, wo of a woman, of, of love. Without that water, without that love, death is certain. Well, there's a poet from the 7th century, uh, Abu Saina, and it's said of him, I will read the poem in Arabic.
En d'autres termes, on lui demande d'aller grevoyer pour, pour la, euh, la gloire de... For the glory de, of... of his tribe and he replies I know no greater effort greater jihad than that of love one final word there is also a hadith by the prophet, prophet which says good, uh, good is God is beautiful and loves beauty where there is beauty there is love where there is love there is beauty and we're going to speak there we speak of the word ishq in carpentry, this is the joint. In carpentry, this is the joining of two parts, male and female, to attach a wooden pole to a lance head. This is the graft or the gardener, skilled in the art of marrying flowers and trees. This is the twining plant, twisting in spirals around the others, embracing them as love clings to the heart. This is the bind. This is the there's the mo there's the word somewhat this is the the east wind it's the female palm which moves towards the male farm to attach a wood et enfin, le mot le plus connu, connu mais méconnu aussi, c'est hub. And the best known word is hub for love. Love is. is c'est la graine qui donne sa moelle en plein désert comme l'amour et la sève de la vie. These are the four legs which support the animal as love supports all of the loved one, disgrace and glory. Rejection. It's also like the heart of the lover, so full, filled with love, that it could not contain anything else without overflowing. This is the seed which gives up its marrow far away in the desert, just as love is the sap of life. This is pure affection, the original love, the one whose purity penetrates the heart whose clarity lies unthreatened by any alteration. The last chapter, when we speak of death, when we, when we speak of the desert, death is ever present. But when it comes to love, one of the greatest poets, one of the greatest Arab po po uh, poets, Mutanabi, who said, I am astonished to see he who, who dies who never loved. He, in fact, associates death with love in that who, he who does not love or never loved cannot die. Only those who loved can die. In that aesthetic of the desert, there's something astonishing. It's the aesthetic of the sand being taken by the wind, a feeling of the ephemeral, a 
feeling of the infinitely small and the infinitely big. To conclude, we will read to you Jaloun, the name of a great poet of the uh, seventh century. He's called Majnoun, and his love took him, brought him to death. Junoon, this is mental illness, or the palm tree soaring high in the sky, delusions of grandeur. It is a little white serpent with black eyes, living among humankind. It is the veil, everything which takes the gaze's place, night by its shades, the corpse delivered to the tomb the child in its mother's belly, the orchard behind high walls, the paradise invisible to the eyes of men. It is youth's ardor, love's folly, also one possessed by the demon between ecstasy and delirium. It is love behind a veil, which no longer sees anything, become invisible like the soul or the jinn, its heart ravished. It is the veil which alone is mad with love. In conclusion, there's the word fana. Fana is the space wide open, but it is also the void. This is the man obscure, unknown, with neither origin nor tribe. It's the endless contemplation of the deity. This is the soul which, like the wind, blows in several directions. This is troubled perception vision of the beloved whose supernatural beauty strikes you down. Literally, this is to dissolve the destruction of the lover, of the lover at the confines of death. I will read to you a small poem the Dur of Urmi, which reflects that continuity he says, I love you neither with my heart nor with my mind. The heart can stop, the mind may forget. I love you with my soul, the soul never stops and it never forgets. 13th century Durami, again the same, there's the same theme with Majnun from the 7th century. This was five centuries between them, but the same theme. There's a continuity of this theme of love, which to my mind is the soul of the, Arab lang of the Arabic language. Thank you very much. Madam Bash, Abdel Bashar, for that passage which enchanted us all. The director had to leave the room since she had a last minute commitment. Once more, thank you for entrancing us with that beautiful presentation that authentic presentation for us all. We will move now to the next stage of this celebration with another Arab artist, Omar Ponso. Before giving the floor to Mr. Ponso, who will deliver his presentation, to a video on Zoom, I'd like to thank you for responding to our invitation and for agreeing to to take part in Arabic Language Day. I would now like to introduce you very briefly. When he, he studied uh, economy at university, 
Uh, while studying, he realized that he had a gift for, for the arts, thanks to the encouragement of his friends, his loved ones, and his admirers. He decided to make, turn his gift into his profession. He became a member of the Emanila Fashion House in Kuwait. He started as working as a stylist there, having received his diploma in 1994. He then contributed to transforming the Free Chic Fashion House, turning it into one of the most famous in Kuwait. In 2000, he joined Gibbons in the UAE as artistic director. In 2003, he founded his own fashion house called Omar Ponso Couture. That's when he included callig calligraphy into the world of fashion. This then became a phenomenon as reflected in several aspects of life in the Middle East. In 2005, he added the idea of female empowerment to his collection called Revolte Toi, where he encouraged women to ensure her unique beauty and strength could prevail. He joined the French School of, Mo of Fashion, Esmode, as a teacher of fashion and creative thought. He won the prize for creative teaching in 2015. And during that period, he trained a number of professionals and helped them discover the hidden crea creativity within their personalities and help them succeed in their professions as designers. His chief interest as a contemporary artist was to take up those elements which uh, constitute the interior strength of uh, mankind. His works are characterized by courage, simplicity, and symbolism. In 35 years of his artistic career, he's devoted his artistic excellence to illustrating the interior universe of human beings through his paintings, his calligraphy, sculptures, his graphic design, and even through his short films. He has always sought to shed light on the dreams, suffering, weaknesses, and strengths of uh, humanity. So we will now give the floor to Omar Ponso, who will now be giving us the introduction, who will now deliver his presentation. Thank you. 
Hello? Yes, we can hear you. Are, are, are you listening? Are you listening to me? Yeah. Yeah. Can I speak now? Yes. 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 All right. I would like to address uh, my speech in Arabic since we are celebrating the Arabic language today. Good afternoon. First of all, I want to thank the organizers of this event for their invitation here to take part. I trust that my statement will be useful for you. I am a designer. Some of you will be astonished to see me here when we speak, speak, we speak of the Arabic language. Nevertheless, I will speak the Arabic language has an uh, influence on in our everyday life. Arabic is a very beautiful language, a language which reflects our values, which allows us to live in our contemporary world. The Arabic language has great many characteristics. I would speak uh, from my or origins with the Arabic language. I started with the poet Suleiman Issa for many years. I tried to read the writings, and I recall of long passages that I read in Arabic. The poem and Arabic poems and literature what pushed me for, forward. The poems of Mutanabi, Danis, Mahmoud, Dervish, and others. All those words accompanied me as a teacher. It inspired me as a teacher. It inspired me to put very many things in my paintings, and I saw the influence of this in my own uh, the, uh, my own behavior and how I spoke, how I spoke to those around me. Arabic is not just a language, ladies and gentlemen. It is the mother, it is the, it's all about where you live, it's all about how you teach. I will tell you, a, uh, now, one of my works, which I hope I want to share with you this video to get the experience for yourself. أصل المنال خيال ولكل مقام مقال أحسن الكلام ما لا تمجه الأذان ولا يتعب فهم الأفهام مرحبا نحتفل اليوم باللغة العربية فحري بنا أن نعرج على علاقة اللغة بالفكر وبتأثيرها بتفاصيل حياتنا اليومية وعلى فهمنا لذواتنا وللآخرين حولنا على حد سواء ولطالما تساءلت سابقا هل للغة ما أثر أو فضل على كل ذلك أم أن كل اللغات سواء إن لغات مختلفة تنحو تحدثيها مهارات معرفية مختلفة واختلاف الألسن قد يفضي إلى اختلاف في طرق التفكير وما يميز لغتنا العربية عن غيرها سمتان أساسيتان جزالة تركيبها ووسع عبقرية شرحها لمشاعر متحدثيها وكيف ينعكس كل ذلك على شكلها في فن الخط العربي وما أثر كل هذا على أسلوب حياتنا اليوم بالأساس وكما يقول نعوم تشومسكي هي وسيلة للتعبير عن الأفكار ولخلق الأفكار أيضا وأذكر في العام 2003 ولوله الشديد بالشعر العربي 
صممت اولى مجموعات الازياء الراقيه المستوحاة من قصائد الراحل الكبير نزار قباني، فكان كل فستان يعبر عن مضمون احدى قصائده ويترجم مشاعر قائلها بعناصر ماديه كاللون والاقمشه والقصاص. فكانت محاولتي الاولى لترجمه مشاعر الناطقين باللغه العربيه الى عناصر ماديه كالازياء واسلوب الحياه اليوميه. تبعتها مجموعه اخرى باسم ثوري لتأخذ بعدا أكثر عمقا في التعبير عن هواجسنا في منطقتنا العربية من محرمات وعوائق اجتماعية والدعوة للتغيير المجتمعي بأناقة خط الثلث وانسيابيته وروعة تناسقه كدعوة للثورة على القيود مبتدئين طبعا بذواتنا وكيف نراها ونعكسها لمحيطنا وكان طبعا للشعر العربي كذلك العامل الحسم بخلق الفارق في الفكر وترجمته كرسالة إنسانية هادفة تأثير اللغة العربية لم يتوقف عند تصميم الأزياء بل انتقل أيضا إلى نواح فنية أخرى في حياته كالرسم التشكيلي، التصوير الضوئي، تصميم المكان والديكورات ولم ينتهي بالتحرير المرئي أو الرقمي للأفلام التي أقوم بإنتاجها مؤخرا هذه لغتي ومعجزتي عصا سحري وحدائق بابلي ومسلتي هي أكثر من خطاب وأعمق من كتاب هي سري المكنون وناصيتي أنقل بها حضارتي وفني وعلمي وإبداعي لكم وللعالم أجمع لنرتقي معا وعود على بدء أودعكم بكلمة مرحبا أو الله محبة شكرا جزيلا إذا للسيد Thank you very much, Mr. Omar Bonso, for that uh, outstanding presentation. Before giving the floor to the next speaker, we will hear from our colleague, Mr. Mohamed Asi, with a musical interlude. Thank you very much to our colleague Mohammed for that very pleasant musical interlude. We will now move to the next part of our program, and I'm going to give the floor to our colleague Mr. Jaime Sanchez Ratia, who will be introducing to us the poet Mr. Fadal Al-Azawi 
Thank you very much, much Mr. Azawi, who's agreed to read out his poetry to mark Arabic language day. And I would also thank Mr. Jaime Sanchez Ratia, who will be uh, introducing the Fadal al Azawi to us. And then we will listen. There will be, a, uh, there will be uh, then a translation of the, his poems into Spanish. Jaime, I give you the floor. Thank you, Mr. Wagamadan, Director of Arabic Translation, ladies and gentlemen. It's with great joy that I address you to mark celebrations of Arabic Language Day here at UNOG. It's a double joy, I feel, because it's the head of the Arab Translation section who invited me uh, this in my to my mind is, is a great honor for someone like me who's a admi such an admirer lover of this language also because i think that this language very much deserves to be celebrated over and above other languages for a number of reasons first of all because arabic is a divine language it's a characteristic that no other language can boast also because it is the language spoken by my ancestors in the land we called Andalus se uh, several centuries ago. And finally, because it is the language of the Arabs and the official language of 22 states and is one of the UN and has been one of the UN official languages for 50 years. Well, Mahuri. Allow me to add other arguments to what I've already said. The Arabic is not one language, but several languages at the same time. It's a miraculous language given its apparent diversity and its hidden unity. Only those who speak it since childhood are fully aware of this. It's also the language of poetry with the one Al-Arab and the poets Dal Khansa, Al Mutanabi, Abu Tamam, Abu Ala Al Mari, as well as Mahmoud Darwish ibn Zaydun, Muslim ibn Al Walid ibn Al Rumi, and why not Mukhalid bin Bakr al Mosuli? This never ending list goes on with names just as glorious and famous who have marked the history of Arab and global literature and thought and which have made this language a timeless treasure for all for the creativity of all humanity the arabic language in all its nobility places the most beautiful costume to its writing in other words i'm speaking of calligraphy it is the language of the poet who honors us us today with his presence online uh, in view of the difficult circumstances that we have been going through for the last two years. We will now hear him deliver some of his poems. We will list, we'll, we'll hear from the great poet and rom Iraqi romancier Fadil al-Azawi. <laughs> Fadil al-Azawi, the writer, was born in the Iraqi city of Kirkuk in the 1940s. He was at the head of a group of poets known as the Kirkuk Group. By chance, he is a, he is a unique witness to the history of Mesopotamia during the tumultuous times that this region and he himself have gone through over the last few tragic decades. He is a living example of the ex exile that uh, in Arab intellectuals like uh, Adonis Bayati Al Sayyab, Sarkon Bulus, and many others have suffered from. Uh, Al Azawi uh, suffered the bitterness of prison in his country of origin. This painful experience is reflected in his poems through the frequent, although unusual, use of the ter of the that appalling term, a tormentor as if it was a scar which stayed engraved in his memory. Despite this 
experience upon leaving prison, he was still an optimist, a poet attached to his creative and intellectual independence, one who is profound, that independence is deep-rooted in him. He has never uh, foregone that independence. That is why he took exile in Germany, where he still is now and where he will probably stay. Al-Azawi's poetry is a miracle. It is a wise blend of the ancient and the modern, between the exquisite and the creative, between free verse and prose. He abandoned prosody and explored and opted for unexplored zones, instilling in it his sense of humor. The child in him has stayed with his, his smile full of bounty and his very lively frame of mind. It's that child who read with such great admiration the novels of 1001 Nights in his family house in Kirkuk, that same child who learnt Turkmen in his uh, in his uh, home village, which uh, which is a true symbol of multilingualism, that same child who was able to learn English all alone and thanks to great determination and the help of a teacher who lived in the country, these efforts were crowned with his success, with success since he was he graduated in English literature from the University of Baghdad and then he earned his doctorate during his exile in Leipzig University, Germany, and now he's he's on in the editorial team of the British magazine Banipal. Al Azawi is has authored more than 20 books, the majority of which have been translated into the most important world languages. These are collections of poems, eight altogether, uh, collected in two tomes, each close to 1,000 pages long. He's also the author of novels such as The Last Angel, The Beautiful Creatures of Fahdi al-Azawi, A Town of a City of Ashes, and more. He's also the author of a number of critical books, not to mention the books he's translated from Arabic, from German and English into Arabic, and the other way around, too. He we are fortunate to be able to have him with us today during this celebration, which is more modest than it is as usual due to the pandemic. He has left the marks of his unique ingenuity and his creative optimism. Was it not him who said in one of his poems, if I die, you can list all my vices, it doesn't matter what you will say of my faults. The most important thing is that I was a poet. Thank you, Fadil, for your poetry. And above all, thank you for being a poet, because as Holderlins once said, only what that which the poets built will remain. I thank you. Thank you very much, Jaime, for your presentation. We will listen to some uh, fragments of the poem chosen by Mr. al who is going to read them out himself, I believe. صرخات مكتومة ومحاربون يغسلون سيوفهم في نبع بعد المعركة قوافل كثيرة مرت من هنا لم نسمع Long caravans travel through them في الطرقات We didn't even hear the uh, clapping of their horses. The knife entering the heart. Uh, let the prey go to the pasture. If you are a forest, run to the... If you're a wolf, run to the forest. If you are captive, I will break your chains. I've already traveled down this path. We have always been there. Ikha 
في برج يتسلق السماء داخل غرفة زجاجية مغلقة جلس هيكل عظمي لسقي ووضع يده على كتفي متمتما أنت أخي ثم قدم لي فراشة قاصدة النار هابطا في الظلام متعثرا بالأدراج جاءني العالم ووضع قلبه في كفي فأحرق أصابعي مثل جمرة مغلفة بالرماد وملطخة بالدم البشري هدنة دائمة بين الإنسان وما قبله هدنة دائمة بين الريح والشجرة أطفئ النار دع الفراشة تعد إلى وردتها فيلم في محطة قطار في محطة قطار في الشتاء عائدا من سفرة طويلة وجدت نفسي جالسا في صالة سينما للعابرين أشاهد فيلما لا أعرف قصته كان قد بدأ قبل وصولي فيلم لا ينتهي أبدا لا يهم من أين تراه لأن كل فصولي تتكرر كما الحياة ذاتها أبطال يضعون أقنعة لصوص فوق وجوههم جيوش تزحف في الجليد لتصل إلى مدينة ما ومهرجون يسيرون أمام عربات تجرها خيول منهكة رجال بأجنحة من شمع يسبحون في الفضاء عشرات تشق طرقها الغريبة إلى الكواكب تحت شموس محرقة ثم من يعثر على لؤلؤة ويفقدها ثانية ونحن ننزف على الشراشف فوق أسرة مسافرين في فندق رخيص لليلة واحدة متفرجون موتى ومتفرجون أحياء ثم من يدخل ثم من يخرج القاعة مظلمة دائما وفيلمنا مستمر بلا نهاية الموكب الصامت وضعا يدي في جيبي المثقوبين سائرا في الشارع رأيتهم يتطلعون خلسة إلي من وراء زجاج واجهات المخازن والمقاهي ثم يخرجون مسرعين ويتعقبونني تعمدت أن أقف لأشعل سيجارة والتفت إلى الوراء كمن يتجنب الريح بظهره ملقيا نظرة خاطفة إلى الموكب الصامت لصوص ملوك قتلة أنبياء وشعراء كانوا يقفزون من كل مكان ويسيرون ورائي منتظرين إشارة مني هززت رأسي مستغربا ومضيت وأنا أصفر بفمي لحن أغنية شائعة متظاهرا بأني أمثل دورا في فيلم وبأن كل ما ينبغي علي أن أفعله هو أن أسير دائما إلى الأمام حتى النهاية المريرة اسمع يا نوح اسمع يا نوح 
لقد شيدنا دائما بأذرعنا الهزيلة سدودا عالية جديدة ضد الطوفانات القادمة كلما غرقت سفينة بنى النجارون سفينة أخرى ذكريات المستقبل وحدها هي الأمل أنين الغرق يسمع في كل العصور معجزتنا هي أننا قد ظللنا على قيد الحياة الأسد والحواري إن كنت حواريا منقوشا اسمه في لوح الشهداء فأنا الأسد الفاتك أربض قدامك في الحلبة احلم ما شئت بجنات الفردوس فيما أنا أنهش أوصالك حتى العظم آه لا تلعني أنت العارف أن نحن الاثنين سنؤدي واجبنا المكتوب علينا في هذا العالم متحدين فاصعد فرحا منتصرا نحو سماء الخلد فيما نحن أسود الغابة سنظل نزمجر فوق الأرض هنا نفترس القديسين إذن سأقرأ بالإسبانية أوكي. تفضل زميلنا خيمي يقرأ لنا ترجمات هذه القصائد باللغة الإسبانية تفضل مشكورا نقرأ في نفس الترتيب التي قريت القصائد ويا sobre la arena un monstruo antiguo ha pasado por aquí huellas paganas dejaron tras de sí los beduinos sobre la escala de piedra del pozo seco Sangre sobre la arena, gritos ahogados y guerreros que limpian sus espadas en un riachuelo tras la batalla. Numerosas caravanas pasaron por aquí. No escuchamos siquiera el piafar de sus caballos por los caminos. La presa ramonea la hierba y el cuchillo permanece en su funda. ¡Ay, deja que la presa ramonee la hierba! ¡Deja que el cuchillo, el cuchillo siga en su funda! Si eres lobo, huye hacia el bosque. Si eres prisionero, yo romperé tus grilletes. Este camino ya lo recorrí antes. Estuvimos siempre aquí. Fraternidad. En una torre que se aupa hasta el cielo, dentro de una habitación de cristal cerrada, se sienta un esqueleto pegado a mí. Me pone la mano sobre el hombro y murmura, eres mi hermano. Luego me ofrece una mariposa que revoloteaba hacia el fuego. Hundiéndose en las tinieblas, tropezando con los escalones, me llegó el mundo y puso su corazón en la mano, quemándome los dedos como un asco envuelta en cenizas y mancillada de sangre humana. Tregua perpetua entre lo humano y lo que procede. Tregua perpetua entre el viento y el árbol. Apaga el fuego, deja que la mariposa vuelva a su rosa. Película en una estación de tren. En una estación de tren en invierno, volviendo de un largo viaje, me encontré sentado en una sala de cine para gente de paso, viendo un film cuyo argumento desconozco, pues ya había comenzado cuando entré. Un film ininterminable, eterno, lo mirases por donde lo mirases, porque todas las escenas se repetían como la vida misma. Héroes que llevaban los rostros enmascarados como ladrones, ejércitos que marchaban sobre el hielo para llegar a la ciudad tal payasos que marchaban delante de las carretas tiradas por caballos derrengados, hombres con alas de cera que nadaban en el espacio, insectos que abrían sus entrañas, extrañas rutas hacia los planetas bajo soles ardientes. Uno encontraba una perla y la volvía a perder. Nosotros nos desangrábamos sobre las sábanas, tendidos sobre lechos viajeros en un hotelucho de una noche y no más. Espectadores difuntos y espectadores vivos, hay quien entra, hay quien sale, la sala siempre a oscuras y nuestra película que continuaba interminable. Convoy silencioso. Metiendo las manos en los bolsillos agujereados mientras andaba por la calle, los vi que me miraban de reojo, desde detrás de los escaparates de las tiendas y los cafés. 
y luego salían apresuradamente y se ponían a seguirme. Quise detenerme para encender un cigarrillo y me incliné hacia atrás como hacen quienes se evitan el viento de cara, lanzando una ojeada furtiva al convoy silencioso. Ladrones, reyes, asesinos, profetas y poetas saltaban desde todos los lados y me seguían esperando de mí una señal. Meneé la cabeza extrañado y seguí adelante silboteando un airecillo de una canción popular, fingiendo que interpretaba un papel en un film y que todo lo que tenía que hacer era caminar siempre hacia adelante, hasta el amargo final. Escucha, Noé, siempre construimos con nuestros enclenques brazos nuevas y altas presas contra las inundaciones próximas. Cada vez que se hunde un barco, los carpinteros construyen otro. Solo los recuerdos del futuro son la esperanza. Los quejidos de los ahogados se escuchan en todas las épocas. Nuestro milagro es haber seguido con vida. El león y el apóstol. Si tú eres un apóstol cuyo nombre está cincelado en la tabla de los mártires, yo soy el feroz león arrodillado ante ti en la arena. Sueña cuanto quieras con los jardines del Edén, mientras yo roo tus articulaciones hasta el hueso. Ah, no me maldigas, sabes bien que nosotros dos cumplimos con la obligación que nos ha sido prescrita en este bajo mundo, unidos. Así pues, elévate, dichoso y triunfante, hacia el cielo de la eternidad, en tanto que nosotros, leones de la espesura, seguimos aquí rugiendo sobre la tierra y devorando santos. Thank you to our colleague Jaime for the excellent translation. Once again, I would like to thank the great poet Fadel Al-Azawi for having read out some uh, bits of his poems. Thank you very much to both of you. This is where we've seen the Spanish language tie in with our Arabic language. We are drawing to a close in terms of the cel celebration. I would like to pay tribute to one of the great artists from the Arab world, Sabah Fahri. As you know, not long ago, the Arabic world bid farewell to one of the greatest figures of Oriental music and one of the most distinguished symbols of the Arabic melody, the Terab. Sabah Fahri uh, departed this world at the age of 88. The artist Sabah Fahri is uh, known because of his interpretation of uh, classical music from Alep, the Kudut, and the Muashahat, sung poems. He added his rhythmic personal touch to them and his mastery of uh, classical oriental notes. His interpretation was unique. On the stage, he could perform for hours on end, such as in Caracas in 1968, when Sabah Fahri sang on stage live for over 10 hours in a row. In Arabic and international festivals, Fahri, through his voice, exalted the heritage of uh, traditional songs from Aleppo and the poems of major classical Arabic poets such as Abu Firas al-Hamadani, al-Mutanabi, Ibn al-Farid, Ibn Zaidun, the great, he was a great composer, and he set to music the texts of the most contemporary poets, such as Fuad el Yazigi. Amongst some of the well-known songs are What's the Matter, My Beauty? Send Me Your Answer, uh, Love, um, Make Me Drink from Your Intoxicating Cup, Little Bird, Fly Far Away, Your Swinging Waste, The Treasure of Damascus, and many other songs that have become popular in all of the Arab regions. Throughout the course of his 70-year career, Fahri had the uh, most praiseworthy nicknames, such as the Prince of Tarab, the Sultan of Tarab, the Nightingale, the Lark, the uh, King of Tarab, of authentic art, and the Nightingale of the Orient. He held a number of posts. He was elected president of the Trades Union of Artists, vice president of the Union of Arabic Artists, and director of the Syrian Song Festival. In 2007, he was awarded a Syrian medal 
to uh, acknowledge his great achievements and his contribution, his countless contribution to enriching authentic Arab Syrian legacy and heritage. To pay tribute to the memory of this tremendous artist whose star will continue to shine in his memories, today we will revive his memory by listening to a set of musical and rhythmic pieces. We will listen to some of the songs of this tremendous artist and we will end our celebration of the Arabic Language Day by listening to his music. We are coming to an end of this wonderful celebration, which is a uh, rejoicing movement for our hearts and spirits, thanks to the presentations and interpretations. I'd like to extend my thanks to our distinguished uh, panelists, uh, also uh, those who are following us online. Our thanks go to Jaime, and we would like to thank all of those who have taken part in the room and those of us who followed us online over Zoom. Of course, I wish to thank all colleagues from the uh, various units, the technicians, the translators, interpreters. In particular, I'd like to thank Madam Shireen El Dalati for organizing, preparing, and allowing for the celebration to run smoothly. I'd like to thank Mr. Fatima Wata, Mr. Mohammed Asi, and all of those who have uh, worked in one way or another to ensure that this event is a success. I'd like to thank all of you again, and I hope to see you next year. Thank you very much. Oh, <laughs> my